Yeah. So, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our latest chapter of this podcast. Today, we are meeting uh, the one and only Nando Fehe. And uh, to just give you a brief, brief background about Nando, yeah, that's, that's him waving over there. Nando has over a decade and a half, uh, more than a decade and a half, 17 years to be precise, of experience in cybersecurity. And that is not just your straightforward cybersecurity, but he has been leading several multidisciplinary uh, aspects of cybersecurity as well. And he has had a very fantastic background and growth as well. Um, and currently he's CISO at Positivo Technologia, and he is based in uh, Toronto. And the best part is very recently, he has been nominated among the top uh, 100 CISOs in the world. So congratulations are in order, Nandor. Uh, congratulations from all of us here, our listeners and everyone at Secretario and our team. Um, that, that's a fantastic achievement. And uh, possibly we'll begin there quickly, uh, Nandor. And uh, you know, you can start by giving us a brief background about your journey in cybersecurity, because I think that is something we would really love to hear. A senior LinkedIn profile, amazing uh, sort of a journey it's been, and, and the kind of teams you have led and the kind of results and outcomes you have delivered. I think there is definitely a story there that we would love to hear. So how's it been so far, Nandor? Over to you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for, 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 for the greetings. It's a big pleasure to stay here today. I'm so excited uh, to, to share with you and with every, everyone about cybersecurity, about my career, my challenge, my efforts. And I love to talk all about that. And thank you so much for, for this time. Um, I work with, uh, with IT plus than 20 years. And specifically in cybersecurity, I have 17 years experience. I started many years ago with uh, microcomputer services. And okay. then I go to the, to the infrastructure. So from micro, microcomputer services to infrastructure. And then finally, I started in cyber 17 years ago. It's a lot of time. It's a, a good journey, and but uh, for me, cybersecurity is a passion. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I love to to work with that, and I, in my career, I have um, a big pleasure to to meet with many good professionals, with many good people who can help me where I learn it so much, and thanks. I, I'm I'm here now. I'm CISO from Positivo. I am at now at this moment. I am in Brazil, so and I'm, I'm in the headquarters in in Brazil. So it's a it's a very good journey. Uh, I when I start in cyber in cyber security, I begin with um, uh, with cyber analysts. And then I move to the to the leadership. So this is a it's a, a very good journey, and I have a big pleasure to 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 stay here today. Perfect, Nando. Thanks for that. I mean, I, I think you you have seen many things. I I think from where you started to where you are currently, like you rightly said, computers all the way to infrastructure. I think that's the way cybersecurity has evolved as well. So. I can clearly see you have evolved in, in parallel as well. Uh, so to take a step back here, uh, Nandor, how did you end up in cybersecurity? Was it something that you always wanted to do? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure if when you were growing up, there was, there was anything about cybersecurity in those days. But how did you get into this field? And I'm sure there's something interesting there that you'd like to share with uh, us. Uh, I think in my, in my path, go through that and my my first approach for the cybersecurity was many years ago mm -hmm. when my boss uh, just faced me with a, a, a challenge okay we uh, in in two, 20, 2002 2003 mm -hmm. more or less uh, it was not normal and not most popular the the firewall 
like mm -hmm. where, where we have today. Today you can find find fire, firewall in Amazon, and you can yeah. buy Fortnet, Palo Alto, and many other brands. So excellent firewalls, and mm -hmm. you can uh, put, uh, you can uh, just start up in uh, in simple in simple commands. It's today is pretty easy. But in twenty in in two thousand three, mm -hmm. uh, my my boss faced me for, for a challenge to create um a VPN mm -hmm. system where to mm -hmm. connect all um all sites from the company because okay. we was planning to start to sell in credit card. Okay, so. I think why not? Uh, so, I ask, what what's the deal? <laughs> and he, he he asked me, I don't know why you you plan something and come back to me with with the plan and we are gonna uh, figure out. Okay. I said okay, and then I start to to search how to to create a firewalls. And the most popular <laughs> in two thousand three was a, a Linux firewall. Okay. Yeah, we was you like I said we wasn't have Fortinet at this time, not most mm -hmm. popular. And I come back with my boss and I said, "Hey, I have a plan. You pay to me um, uh, uh, a Linux class. Okay, I'm gonna learn how to mm -hmm. how to do how to start up and set up the Linux." How to create a VPN, and then I can, I can we we can create the VPN for the company. That's mm -hmm. that's fair. And he said, why not? So then I start my my career in Linux and my first approach in cybersecurity. At uh, the end of the at at the story, uh, just short shorting the story. After six months. I create uh, 10 uh, Linux uh, servers, all connected okay. with VPN and mm -hmm. all communicating with, uh, I don't remember exactly the protocol, but I think it's X25. It's mm -hmm. a security card protocols. And I put to, to communicate how the, 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 the company through the this this Linux file. This is was a big challenge, a big a big deal, and and then over there I start my my approach in the cybersecurity, and there there was my second passion passion. Mm -hmm. You know, my my first passion was uh, when I was seven years old, okay. and my second passion was when I. Configure. I configured my first file. Oh. I saw that and I, I think, oh, that's amazing. I, I can create the rules to, to allow, to block. I can filter. I can, I can do many things. That's very interesting. And then I jump in the cybersecurity. At this time, I was uh, in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But uh, starting to study a uh, cybersecurity field mm -hmm. and cybersecurity stuff. So, answer your your question. I jump in the cybersecurity through the the firewalls. That's the Linux firewall, IP tables. <laughs> nice. <laughs> was a a long time ago, and was a at this time we 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 has a a very big rocks to 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 broke and to implement very the nice. security. Very, very interesting, man. So essentially you made your entry into this uh, this uh, line of career through a firewall, essentially you can say that, <laughs> to summarize that. Um, but moving on, Nandor, you must have um, also in your current role again, uh, coming to that, uh, uh, your current responsibilities and all. Now, we have heard this huge pressure that's building up on CISOs in the last, I think, a year or so, so to say, uh, in terms of resources, budgets, and also on the other end, the kind of threats that are taking shape 
in cyberspace, specifically in terms of these advanced uh, and sophisticated actors who are sort of really, who have expanded and who, whose business models and uh, tools and tactics have, are evolving at a much faster pace than our defense mechanisms. Uh, so what's your take on it? How, how, are things, how have things been for you in the last one year as far as these threats are concerned and the response mechanisms that you have at your disposal uh, as well? Uh, how, how is those how are those things working for you actually and for positive as well yeah i'm gonna tell uh, about what i i hear in general companies and in general companies how come everyone as is challenging and face it with a, a very a speed up and very growing up the the cyber attacks and now with uh, with AI adoption, uh, I think this is gonna be more more intense. Mm -hmm. And this is and in the other hand, you have a business, and you have uh, the company who need to uh, to take to make money, mm -hmm. and this means you cannot interrupt the business. You cannot interrupt. Uh, the operation because it's critical and right. you at the same time you have also um, users where you cannot put uh, your user with um, uh, with with security concerns you know okay. I think you have to implement I think that I think the the good strategy to implement mm -hmm. cybersecurity is implementing controls, uh, not obstructive. You know, where is very useful and intuitive for the user, so mm -hmm. they can accomplish your day and then can uh, uh, deliver the goals for for the company. So. Uh, I don't like the, where where cybersecurity is between uh, the business and the goals. Cybersecurity oh. have to help business to accomplish and achieve the goals. That's it. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. We're very very well articulated, Nandor. I must say, especially. Uh, the part about not loading the user because I think that is where sometimes the resistance really comes uh, at the user level as in, you know, my, I'm here to be more efficient at my work. Uh, so anything that helps me is good. Anything that slows me down, I may not be very enthusiastic about it. So that that's the perspective. Then, of course, as you said, the, the institutional profits and sustainability is uh, paramount and then of course service security has to align with that it's very well articulated uh, Nandor. Moving Absolutely. on now Nandor, thank, thanks for putting it so uh, beautifully. I think you've outlined all the key points that that all the CISOs are today actually grappling with and are evolving in the process of dealing with these challenges uh, as well uh, Nandor. So coming down specifically to uh, sort of showcasing what cyber security What's the value that cyber security rather brings to your management, Nandor? Uh, how easy or tough has that conversation been? Where I'm specifically coming uh, from is in terms of getting more budgets for you, because I'm very sure that you would be asking for more budgets for a lot of uh, you know ventures and a lot of rather new projects that you wish to start. So how is it that conversation goes forward when you're talking about uh, not seeing cybersecurity as a cost, but as a investment and, and as a uh, you know, value-driven investment rather, which is equally important to your stakeholders, your company stakeholders, as much as profits for that matter. So how does that conversation shape up if you have ever had anything like that with your management and or feel free to suppress anything that you <laughs> that is controversial or not <laughs> there. Oh you are asking me about the budgets, that's it. The budgets about primarily, the... how do you build that case, so to say, to put it in a more uh, direct way? Yeah, way? I think in general, the, on the companies, okay, not not only in my, but in general, the companies uh, to 
to you take the the budget that that depend how successful a CISO can explain to the board about the risks. Mm -hmm. I think this mm -hmm. is this is a very uh, huge ex and simple simple explanation. But mm -hmm. the most important here is to look with a business perspective. Okay. Because sometimes the cybersecurity cost can exceed the fin financial capacity or the health levels. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we are talking about how business make money. And cool. when we talk about money, we need to help to balance the costs for the company. I think right. this is one of, of the most important uh, roles where Stizo in the last few years is coming through. Mm -hmm. Special because uh, cybersecurity is uh, most faced with uh, OPEX, you know, with uh, operation cost. Right. And that means that this cost is recurrence. And also that mm -hmm. means this cost recurrence impact directly in the business results. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a revenue, you have uh, your your cost, mm -hmm. how, may, how much money you have at, at the end in the business. Okay. And when you put a lot of operation costs in, into the business, this mm -hmm. start to, to be a very difficult. So I think mm -hmm. one of the most important rules of the CISO is to help company how to find, find the balance between risk and cost. And you, for do that, you have to to understand both sides, mm -hmm. the cybersecurity perspective, but also you have to understand the business perspective. You and you you need to help to prioritize and to find this balance. Um, when you when you go to the uh, to the to the approval. Mm -hmm. When you when you want to to approval some budget, in the bottom line, I think you must have a really good business case. When you put all stuffs in the in timeline, prioritize, and with a business perspective and cybersecurity perspective, I think the business case is one of the the key. For the CISO to accomplish uh, this 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 challenge. Perfect, perfect, Nandan. Also, uh, taking one point from this conversation again uh, about the communication part, because when you're building a case and uh, when you're articulating, or rather, when you're building that balance that you just spoke about, Nando. Uh, how effectively or you have to be a good communicator that is definitely uh, without a doubt uh, but you have to communicate to the management on one side and then you have the employees uh, at the other and then you have your vendor ecosystem and everybody in your supply chain as well now how much of a control does a CISO have in this process or you have Nandor in terms of you know uh, being that uh, sort of a uh, that authority that communicates across the ecosystem and ensures that you know all these forces are aligned towards a better cybersecurity posture. To put it that way, yeah, that you are, yeah, you are yeah. absolutely correct about the communication, and mm -hmm. I think the CISO, uh, one of the most important ability, they need to. To, to have its uh, communication. The CISO right. need to talk with uh, employee and need to talk with uh, with the board. We need to talk with uh, uh, systems uh, developers. You need to talk with a very type of, of, of people with very different perspective and very mm -hmm. different understanding about mm -hmm. cybersecurity and about uh, IT in general. Uh, so this is, 
I think communication it's a it's one of the one one uh, really important uh, skill in the CSO uh, roles. So uh, what I what I I I, I see it's uh, mm -hmm. about the communication is first mm -hmm. one uh, you have to to tailor your communication to the audience. You know, you have many types and many kinds of many different audience and you have to tailor uh, your your speech and your communication. Mm -hmm. And what, when you tailor your communication, one of the most important is take out your take off of your speech and your communication all of acronyms. You know, XDR, Firewall, EDR, CM, that not mean nothing for the See. business and for the board. Uh, for the board, you, that okay. that is one of the most urgent action for the C. So you have to take off all of these acronyms. This is very important. And mm -hmm. another example is uh, employee may, for example, employee may need to know more about the specific risk they face while stakeholder may may be more interested in the overall impact of a cybersecurity in, in the organization so we we have different interests and different levels of of interest in your communication mm -hmm. and this is a a big a big challenge this is why i I, I try every day every day to grow up in this in this field in communication. I know it's not easy. It's pretty difficult and you have to learn every day how to communicate, how you're to tailor uh, your your communication communication to the audience. A good news is AI generative mm -hmm. AI it's mm -hmm. very helpful in this communication. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. team today, for example, I really um, recommend for all of my team to use AI to where they can learn how to improve their texts, their communications, they reply emails, how they can better communicate through the the audience. Okay. So this is, I think, the generative AI gonna speed up this this challenge. Perfect. Uh, that that brings us to another interesting aspect of cybersecurity, Nanda, which is, of course, as you rightly spoke about AI. Now, one side of AI, of course, is in using it uh, within the organization to like as you rightly said to uh, make uh, employees and uh, your security teams more communicative more responsive um, get a grip on how exactly uh, generative ai for instance is evolving and what should we watch out for uh, there but the other side of it of course is where the threat actors are also leveraging ai uh, and this ai uh, driven models uh, which have automated many aspects of uh, uh, you know, cyber attacks to a very large extent, Nando. So where do you see this whole uh, AI's impact on the negative side going, Nando? Uh, I know there is a threat there. Uh, I know there, there is a definite risk there as well. But do you see, do you foresee rather a time sometime in the future where the cyber defenses will sort of even out this, this threat that AI is posting currently? Should we be optimistic? Yeah. Um, in my opinion, AI is a uh, it's uh, a very good uh, a very good technology, and mm -hmm. they are here to help the 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 the, the people mm -hmm. and the companies to to grow up. The big question mm -hmm. is how you're gonna lead with this. Mm -hmm. And what I see is uh, the most risk in, in AI, one of the most risky in AI, top maybe three or five, 
it's the exfiltrate data. <laughs> many companies and many employees go every day in AI generative like ChatGPT and Bard and many other AIs and put a lot of a lot of information inside of there. Also, we have, on the other hand, we have um, many kind of API handling redirect with your code. And sometimes I, I, I saw uh, developers putting the code in AI mm -hmm. and simple said like that, uh, please help me to make my, my site faster. Okay. So true. AI gonna go gonna gonna accomplish that with a very good uh uh in a very low time, you know, pretty fast. They go that okay. they do that. However, uh what is what is the 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 security concerns in in this modification? Mm -hmm. You know, you you change the code to be fast. Okay. But sometimes to be fast, you have to reduce your security. Man, so totally. fast, some, when you're, many times when you are fast, you are not secure. And when you are secure, you are not fast. Thanks. Fast and security sometimes walk in very different ways. And mm -hmm. I think this is, this is the important challenge where the company needs to take attention and the CISOs need to take attention. The exfiltration, exfiltration data, and mm -hmm. also with uh, with change in codes, change in environment, uh, without security tests, without, um, without uh, security controls and governance inside that. Okay. This is, I think, this is important in operation. And when you see, when you look for the top for the board, I think that the important thing is the board. Uh, uh, it's important to the board of the companies involve the CISOs, and the CISOs can help to handle it with this new technology, and the CISOs can address how implement this in the company. In a good mm -hmm. way and security with a security perspective. Perfect, perfect, Nando. Um, so one part of that whole understanding would be to operationalize the learnings, so to say, uh, Nando. Not just from your past experience, but also from a policy side, governance side, because of course, cybersecurity at the end of the day is also a play of compliance uh, as well, uh, Nando. So the specific question to you would be, what kind of KPIs or what kind of top KPIs would you be recommending or you follow in Positivo as well in terms of tracking the evolution of your cybersecurity posture and your responses and your ability to detect anything that is suspicious? In the whole thing, what, what KPIs do you recommend or follow, Nandor? Sure. Uh, very good question. Thank well, you. overall, when... Uh, and try to simplify here, okay, with a very mm -hmm. simple words. Sure. Cybersecurity, it's about managing risk. Absolutely. Okay? Cool. So the KPIs tends to be a risk monitor. Okay. That's mm -hmm. uh, it, with, with, again, with a very simple words here, okay. Yeah. And the most important is to maintain your risk within of the company tolerance. Okay. Okay. I think it, you have a risk, you have to address this risk and keep this in the company tolerance risks. Well, let's take a look for the three most popular in general where I see in the companies. Okay. And the first mm -hmm. one is average. Uh, time to detect and response incident. I think this is Absolutely. a good, a good, a good KPI. How yeah. fast you are to detect and to react, and then to solve your your incidents, alerts, etc. 
how fast is your your team how fast is your partners uh, sometimes many companies forget about the partners but the partners is a, a very important uh, piece in in this puzzle okay and the second mm -hmm. one i think uh, indicate you, uh, you indicators about awareness program it's mm -hmm. a good one uh, where in a practical view, that means, for example, how alert is the users to detect a phishing attack uh, in the company? Okay. How many time your users gonna take to detect this this your phishing, uh, some phishing attack? You know, mm -hmm. your your mm -hmm. first your first goal to the awareness program is to make your company to maintain your company alert for the for the uh, for ex, for the external attack you know okay so indicators indicators about awareness program who address this can measure this at this attention it's a mm -hmm. it's a, a second very good kpi and i think the third one is a, a vulnerability program like for okay. example, uh, your SLA to remediate your vulnerability. You know, okay. you you receive the CVA. How many time you? In how many time you fix this CVA in your environment, in your servers, and you fix the vulnerability? I think okay. this, this three keep KPI. I think is the three most most popular and. Many companies use that, and I think this is a very good. And through these three KPIs, absolutely, you can uh, ask many other questions, and you maybe you, you can detect many other deviation. Perfect, perfect, uh, Nando. I think we are just running out of time, so I'll just uh, come to the last question, which is. In a way, the most interesting one, and or which a lot of folks ask us uh, whenever we are on. The I, I speak or... too much. Oh no no no! Uh, please, I please speak don't too much. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's articulation, <laughs> and, and or, that that is not the intention to say that you speak a lot. But uh, this has been a very interesting conversation, and I, I wish I could have asked more questions, and we had more time, Nando. We'll definitely come back to you. But my last question would be your advice for somebody who is starting. Um, in, in this field today, you know, somebody who has just uh, uh, finished their graduation and uh, are, are looking to start or have joined a, a, a firm in, in a cybersecurity role. So, because this is one area where we see a lot of people asking us questions wherever, whenever we've gone and met uh, folks who are just starting their career is essentially, now you are definitely somebody who a lot of these folks can look up to. So what are your thoughts and uh, words for these people, Nanda? Well, I think the first one you um you must be a passion for for this for the cybersecurity. You know, it, it's a it's a good job. You today I I see in the world, uh, worldwide I see companies hiring many cybersecurity professionals, uh, managers, CISOs, etc. You have a uh, very good compensations. You have a, a good salaries, uh, but um, I, I think it, you need to address more than than salary. You know, I think it, if you if you just think about salary, I don't I don't know if you if it's if it's it's your your main reason to mm -hmm. to jump into the cybersecurity you know because mm -hmm. you 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 when you start the the when you start the, in the in this professional you're gonna absolutely you're gonna face it with a, a big challenge and mm -hmm. challenge with uh incident perspective challenge with uh with meeting with the board and to convince and to show about the risks. And sometimes yeah. you, you're you gonna tell about something where it never happens and maybe 
never gonna be happen. You know, maybe some some something intangible, intangible okay. things. Okay. And I think it, it to 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 well, what I I really recommend for my entire team is uh, mm -hmm. learn more than only cybersecurity. I think okay. a, a good professional in cybersecurity is that one who learn about network, about infrastructure, telecommunication, about uh, communications. You know how to speak yeah. in public about uh, human behaviors. I think a good professional is that what where we can understand a very big and huge combination of factors of of indicators of you know uh, behaviors and, and etc. You have to lead with that. And I, I expand many time of, of my career in, in certifications, uh, like a CISP, CISP, and, and any others, many others. And I think it's, it's a good way to learn, in my opinion, uh, but also uh, learning in institutions like... Uh, uh like uh, a high school etc also it's it's a good one all right that's that's great man um and one takeaway that I, I could also see from your career is this constant enriching from as many sources of knowledge as you can provided you're able to crunch it uh, in your mind and sort of you know filter it out and distill the information that you need. I think you've done it so wonderfully throughout your career. And I'm sure your team must be, uh, you know, very happy and looking forward to always sort of, you know, you leading the way uh, as well, Nando, because this conversation has given us a flavor of how really you tackle everything, right? Um, I'm, I'm so sorry, Nando, that we have to end it here, but I promise you that we'll come back to you very shortly uh, with uh, the sequel to this particular conversation, because there's a lot more that we want to hear from you. Nando. But for today, thanks a ton for joining us and for sharing all those fantastic insights. I think we made a lot of, lot of things. I mean, I'm sure this is going to be very helpful for a lot of folks, uh, not just in the industry and people who are starting out, but even people outside to get an inside view of what really it entails to be a CISO. So thanks a lot, Nando. And uh, thanks, thanks for sparing your time. We really appreciate it. I... Again, I appreciate the time here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank, thanks for having me here.